I sure will. Uh, good morning, everybody. You're listening to The Voice. Uh, come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. I got a radio show. Just trying to give God some back. Just some back of what he didn't gave me. Just a portion, you know. Just I'm just trying, man, to, to, to show some type of gratitude for all his blessings. I'm just trying to... Man, just just get it right sometimes. You know what I mean? I mean, man, you just can't do what you want to do and just live wrong all the time. Man, you got to, at one point in time, Steve, come on, man. Come on, man, you could do better. I know you can. You know, and, and, and you know what I had to do? I had to stop saying, I'm going to try to do better. And I just had to say, hey, man, I'm going to do better. You know, uh, tr- trying is just to put forth an effort, and then if it don't work, well, okay. But if you make up in your mind that I'm going to do something, then trying isn't enough. It's getting it done is the only thing that matters. See, it's the difference between doing and trying. We're going to try to win the game or we're going to go out here to win the game. Now, trying to win the game means that you could lose. But when you got in your mind made up, most athletes will tell you that they go out there with the full intent and purpose of winning and winning only. See, they don't put the second-place finisher on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Second place don't get you there. You, you got to win. And now take it out of the scope of athletics, but keep it in that type of, type of analogy. In life, man, you just want to, you want to win in life, don't you? I mean, at the end of the day, don't you want to be on the cover of Sports Illustrated of life? Don't you want to be recognized for your hard work? Don't you want? You know, to be recognized in the bonus structure down at your job? Don't you want to have your plaque up on the wall down at your job? I mean, most people do. Some people could care less. Some people don't care about looking good or being their best. And that's cool, but I ain't talking to them, though. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to those of you who who, who want to be the best you can be. You know, people people kill me when they get mad at at, at people. And hey, he brown knows and he all up on the employee of the month. Man, the dude doing his job to the best of his ability, and he getting recognized for it. What that got to do with all that you talking about? Because you ain't up there. You know, it's amazing, man, how people describe other people's success. He's so lucky. Lucky? Hey, man, don't they kind of get you a little bit when people call you lucky? Well, let me tell you what luck really is, y'all. Luck is when hard work bumps up into opportunity. Some people call that luck. But hold on. Let's, let's think about this. If you wasn't working hard, an opportunity presented itself, what would you call that? But see, when you've been working hard 
an opportunity presents itself and it bumps up into each other. Now people want to call that luck. But hold up, here go the part, though, that they ain't paying no attention to. Yeah, that opportunity came by. But if you had not been working hard and the hard work had not ran up in the opportunity, what would you have? No, sir, it's not luck. It's work. It is work. Because there's a scripture that says faith without works is dead. But my mama was a Sunday school teacher. She taught me enough, though. Now, I know the difference between right and wrong just like you do. You ain't got to, you know, it, it kills me when people write a strawberry letter. Am I wrong for this? You know, good and well, look at, let's read your letter. Are you wrong for this? You know, you wrong. What you don't need us to be telling, you know, but I'm going to do this anyway. Well, see, go ahead, though. Do what you want to do. But you know what, y'all? Here's the best advice I can give you. This is what I really uh, came to talk about this morning, but I got sidetracked because I listened. Get out of your own way. So many of us are blocking our own blessings. We're just in our own way. We are in our own way. And one of the most dangerous ways you can get in your way is to do it your way, to get it figured your way, and to lock in on your way, and this the way it's got to go. Do you know how many people are blocking their blessing? Do you know how long I blocked mine with that mindset right there? Look, because it's the way you do it, you think that make it the right way? You think just because you done thought on it long and hard, and that's what you really want. Do you really think that your way is the right way, or could there be a better way? See, until I started listening to God and started paying attention to his way, man, I was spinning my wheels, man. I was out here so determined this is how I was going to do it. But, you know, I had to learn how to get out of my own way because just because I could do it my way didn't mean it was the right way. I had to get out of my own way. Just get out your way, man. Now, wh- wh- what, what does that mean? That means, see, set your goals. That means have your dreams. That's, I'm, I'm saying set your goals, man. I ain't saying don't set goals. Listen to me. Set your goals. What is it you want to happen? What is it you'd like to have? What is it you'd like to be? What do you aspire to? Set your goals and set your dreams. Now, take your goals and your dreams to God and ask God to show you how. Man, you can save yourself a lot of pain. Listen to somebody who did it his way for so long. And when I finally got out of my way, out of my own way, when you've heard old people say, let go and let God, you've heard them say that. I didn't, I didn't get it. But I got it now. Let go and let God. And it's an amazing little saying, though. Now, you know, you may not get it now. It it took me a bunch of years to get it, too. But when I took my goals and my dreams and my vision to God, and I said, God, this is what I hope for. This is what I aspire to. This is what I want to be. This is where I would love to get to. Then I said, help me. Show me how. Point me in the right direction. Let me follow your footsteps. Guide me. Hey, give me a, a spirit of discernment. Show me who wrong. Because I meet people every day, ain't up to no good with me. Every single day. Oh, man. Man, I can't believe I run up into you, man. The Lord told me something was going to happen to me today. Well, see, I talk to him every day. He did not mention you to me. He, he ain't said nothing to me. He didn't tell me what was going to happen in my Now, that don't mean it can't happen. Because I'm open to it. So, really, man. I'm, I'm, and, I, and, I, and, and please know I'm listening as well as I've ever listened before. But, but get yourself together, though. See, know your goals and your dreams, and then let God show you how to do it. He'll do it. You know, it's so important, everybody, that you get focused, that you aim for something, that you dream of something, that you aspire to something. But it's the most, the best thing you can do after you do all that. Man, get God involved in it, man. Talk to him. I mean, why would you not? What you got to lose? You ain't got to go down there and make no big scene and and run laps around the church and run up there and throw yourself on the altar and scream and flip over and throw money in the air. You ain't got to do that. This you and God, man. This you and God. You know, you got to serve and praise him the way you do it. You got to let nobody else tell you how it's done. It's a personal relationship. People kill me if you don't do it this way. If you don't come here to this church and you don't run around in this circle and you don't get flipped in the hand, you don't. Hey, man, you better go have a relationship with God, see what that's about. You understand? Don't nobody throw you off with all that, all right? All right, y'all, talk to him. He'd love to hear from you today. 
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me have it. <laughs> you know what it is. Attention, please. Uh, this is, matter of fact, speaking of attention, today's show is dedicated to people with attention deficit disorder. Can't mm-hmm. hardly pay attention that much. Oh, that's kind of me. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of me too. Mm-hmm. So, now that we know what that is, all y'all that can't pay attention that good, uh, this show is dedicated to you, and what we're asking you to do today is doggone it, pay attention. Okay. <laughs> Through your head, quit drifting off. <laughs> Shirley Strawberry. Oh, hey, I, I just drifted off. Uh, hi, good morning, Steve. How you doing? Mm-hmm. Real good. <laughs> Carla Pharrell. I am paying attention. Good morning, sir. <laughs> Hello, crew. <laughs> Junior. Huh? Oh, I'm the only one listening. Yeah. <laughs> what? You know my attention span is that of a three-year-old. What? You know what? this. What are we doing? See right there. <laughs> the show. But yeah. thank you for dedicating the oh. show to us, Steve. <laughs> that's all right, Jim. Morning, huh? Good no, with it. That's okay. Nobody care about that. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you never just say it, huh? <laughs> all the time. <laughs> what we doing? What, where are we? <sighs> what are we doing? <laughs> Focus. <laughs> focus, people. Focus. I'm focused. I'm focus. here. I'm excited about waking up every day, so I'm here. Man. I know. Thank yeah. you, Lord. Yes. Oh, Thank man. You, Lord. Mm-hmm. Simple thing. Amen again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Got a yeah. bunch of things yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. grateful for. I'm glad I'm not a politician. Woo. Hey, man, you know what's really, really strange, though? And I just what? want to say hmm. this. I, I really, I'm not surprised, but... I'm like really amazed at how the Republican Party is so quiet about what Donald Trump has done. When clearly, if you listen to what happened, it's not right. But they are extremely quiet about it. And it's really, really alarming. But it's it's politics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. We have got to vote. (laughs) We yes, we do, sir. In all no, elections, no. Steve, uh-huh. in all we, yeah. elections. Speaking of paying attention, you know, we really need to pay attention in all of the elections, like you say, Carla, particularly mm-hmm. the presidential election, but there are a lot of elections uh, next year that we have to pay attention to. It's crucial. I kid you not, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, really. Uh, yeah. Local elections. Yeah. Local. Yes. We got to. Mm-hmm. We got to. And, yeah. and the judges. Yeah, the judges, the senators. I, the I just don't know that this country can take four more years of this guy because he's he's doing some real damage and people are trying to ignore the damage to protect their position and their power and their money. Mm-hmm. Yes. But the damage yes. he he's gonna leave a lot of people at the wayside up at the top level too. Yeah. 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 All right. Good well point. listen, um, yep. Yeah, we're going to move on right here. Uh, Coming up at 32 after the hour, uh, do you hit the snooze on your alarm, that snooze button on your alarm clock, or do you just pop right up when the alarm goes off? We're going to talk about that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, um, here's a question we posed right before we went to break. Do you hit the snooze on your alarm or do you get right up? Now, Steve, a listener sent us an email and wanted to know our morning show routine. This email is from Kevin. He says, hey, morning crew. My wife wakes up very early in the morning and when her alarm rings, she turns it off and gets right up to get ready. I couldn't be more opposite. Every time my alarm goes off, I hit the snooze button at least once. I also have crazy procrastinating thoughts when my alarm goes off, like, hmm, I'll just take a shorter shower or, hmm, I'll I'll skip breakfast. All so I can sleep a little longer. So, Steve, I got to ask you, what is your morning routine? Because, you know, we have to be up very early in the morning. Uh, Do you hit the snooze on your alarm clock or do you just pop right up? And, And... Let's answer that one first. Well, first of all, I almost never, ever set my alarm. Mm -hmm. I almost never. Why? Mm -hmm. Because I I wake up every morning before I'm supposed to. 
I, I very rarely ever use my alarm. The only time I use alarm is when I travel. Yeah. And I get okay. in late and I got to get up mm-hmm. really early, mm-hmm. like 4.30 or 4.45, something like that. Then yeah. I use my alarm on my telephone. When I'm at home doing television and radio, I never, yeah. ever set my alarm. So you just I only use my alarm when I have to travel. Yeah, I, wa- I wake up, up automatically. Wow. At like it's what? just at really time weird. Every day? Huh? My mom time. used to do that, yeah. Well, at like at what time? Like four? I mean, I cannot sleep past five thirty. That's that's oh, okay. not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Now do you get are you just up or are you up and out of the bed? Well, when I do wake up, I wake up and I just, you know, lay there for about probably about sixty seconds. Mm-hmm. And uh, because it's kind of weird, man, I'm always like excited to get up. Uh-huh. I think mm-hmm. it has a lot to do with my age because I just think I'm at that age now, man, where I don't want to miss nothing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like a kid who yeah. hates to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, because like, I mean, uh-huh. really, and really, to be honest with you, I know that I do not have 62 more years left. I already know I don't. So since I know yeah, that I've lived longer than I got left, I, I have a tendency to get up and get it started. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, you just be 124. It could happen. I don't. I don't want to do that. <laughs> that's a long no. time. Yes, it is. No, that's a lot of cussing. 124. <laughs> I'm gonna do 104 and get on out. So you have 104 your age, your healthy, desired age. Uh-huh. Still driving, if I want to. At 104. Oh, yeah, I'm going to still be able to drive if I want to. Okay. I can walk around the block, the up hills and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be a, a functional yeah, you're, you're not struggling yeah. with you saying. You're not. No, yeah. no, man. I'm going to take care of myself. I've cut meat mm. way, way back. Okay. okay. Way back. It's not completely gone, mm. but it, uh-huh. it can be absent for long stretches at a time. So have you let oh, go of barbecue? Is this what you're saying? I haven't had any in a long time, surely. Wow. Mm. That I haven't had major. barbecue since. That's breaking news <laughs> since Labor Day. Uh, <laughs> since I had some September. barbecue uh, <laughs> this yeah. summer. Uh huh. Okay, 4th of July holiday. Yeah. That makes sense. Somewhere like that. But other than that, no, man. I've, I've cut way back, to be honest with you. That's good. Right. Let's get That's back good. to the driving yeah. with mm-hmm. the keys at 104. Do, don't you yeah. think we should take yeah. your keys? Now, when I get outside, yeah, you ain't going to take the keys. Then. I might need help finding a car. But, <laughs> but once you get to it, that. it's all good. Yeah, because I'm going to have so many. You know, oh, you, oh, I might okay. forget which yeah. one I drove today. You, know? <laughs> you look forward to seeing your, your grandkids and your great-grandkids and all of that? Do you look forward to that? Here's my deal. Mm-hmm. I would really love to see Winton's grandchildren. Wow. Winton's grandchildren. Wow. That's, wow. that's my goal, man. If I could, I, you know, Winton have a son. He could have a son within ten years. That ain't no big deal. Mm-hmm. I'll be, I'll still be here. But if I could see Winton's grandchildren, mm-hmm. that's I, be I've been talking to God about that. Winton's mm-hmm. grandchildren is what I want to see. Wow, your children! Wow, children. man, and I want to see. I want, children. I want son. <laughs> I want Winton to have a boy. Please, God, let me see that. And if that boy can have a boy and I live to see it, yeah, I can go on in there. Well, what if he has a girl? Okay, then I'm going to be disappointed. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh yeah. My, really? Yeah. yeah. What is that about, Steve? No, I mean, that's about the truth. What? Wow. Because you want yeah. the name to carry on. Carry that's on. Yeah. One of uh-huh. son. Okay. Yeah, see, the, okay. them girls Harvey. of mine, I love them, but Lord have mercy, when they get married, the name gone. Well, they yeah. get hyphenated. No, they don't hyphenate nothing, no. <laughs> man, you kind of agitated about this, uh, for real. <laughs> you ain't got to go off like You're that. Uh, it ain't even I happening. ain't going off. So, I won't <laughs> say old-fashioned. I'll just say so traditional. Well, it's, so I don't, it's not. It's just, if you have boys, I don't care if they have girls. I, mm. I'm beautiful with them. I love my daughters and my granddaughters. They yes, so precious, man. But if he don't have no boys, I'm going to be hurt. Mm. Yeah, that's going to bug me a little bit. Okay. 
Okay. I asked him was about Man, that's just being what real. What what you, what everybody tripping for? No, it's I, okay. Just, it's, just, I know, it's, no. it's okay. Yeah. If you it's don't fine. want the answer, don't, don't ask. Don't, the, don't ask the question. I got. <laughs> I asked you about the snooze button. That's I know, but I, I did. I know he talked about. <laughs> yeah. No, sure. All right, he, so. he came out and just said, "I'm gonna be disappointed." <laughs> <laughs> What if he thing. has girls? I'm going to be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Wow. Let me tell you the real truth. When them twins was born uh-huh. and the yeah. first one came out and they said it was a little girl, I said, that's mm-hmm. cool. The second one came, they said, oh, the second one is a boy. I said, my oh. man. Then he said, oh, no, it's another baby girl. I was crushed. Oh. Like a grape dog. <laughs> All right. Um, The nephew (laughs) is not here today, but Junior, of course, is here. We're going to run that prank back with Junior right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, Beyonce and Solange text test a negative for the cancer gene, and University of Kansas apologizes for Snoop's concert. Boy, oh boy, that concert. Oh, right yeah. now, though. I saw it. Uh, I saw it. I saw I saw it. it. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you expect, right? All right, uh, the nephew's out, but Junior is in in his place to run that prank back. What you got for us today, Junior? Draws at the retirement home. <laughs> That's how the nephew would say it anyway. Draws at the ne- retirement home. Like we didn't hear it the first time. I know. Draws at the retirement home. <laughs> Run it, cat. Hello? Yo. Oh, uh, yeah, who's this? Who is this? This is attorney David. David who? Uh-huh. All right, this is Anthony. Anthony, I was giving you a call. You used to work at the... Uh, uh, senior Center, am I right? Yes. Okay, we got a bit of a problem here. Uh, are you familiar with Miss? Yes. Yes. Older lady that 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 uh, a Caucasian lady that's here at the center. Yes. Okay. Now we got a problem. I know you retired in uh, in December, but uh, there's cleaning out her room, cleaning up her room. There's been some uh, men's underwear found here, and she's saying that it's yours. Well, then you got a problem because I, I don't know where the lady lives at. No, here here at the center, sir. They're claiming well, that. Then at the center, you find the ladies and men underwear said it was mine or whoever and whatever and whatever. Now I don't waste my time with that. If you gonna call somebody, call somebody, get it straight now. But don't waste my time with you. Have a nice day. Wait just a minute, sir. I don't want to have to. I don't want to have to get officials to come down there. Hello? Yes, sir, Mister. This, this, this is the turn. Listen, I don't want. I want. I want to try to do this without your wife finding out. But we need. I got a few questions I need to ask. You tell your wife to pop it. You man, don't mess with me. You're wasting my time. Come on, <laughs> call it back, dog. <laughs> hey, this is Doris. Please enjoy the music until I answer your call. Oh, that's right. Hello? Doris, it's time. Yes. Boy, he didn't cuss us out, but he keep hanging up. So uh-huh. so I need I need you to help me out. I want you to uh, call from your phone uh-huh. and put us on three-way and say, hey, you need to talk to these people. Okay. Hello? Hello? This is Doris. Tony's right here. Um, I told him about the situation with... So I just want him to clear it up so you can stop calling him, okay? Yes, I, 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 this is a, attorney David. Is he available? I can speak with him. Sure. Hold on a second. Attorney David. David. Who? Hello. Hello, Mr. Uh, Tony Anthony. Yeah. Could you possibly tell me what's going on? Uh, why we would find your your underwear in Miss uh, in her room? Who? 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 How you know it wasn't your underwear? I'm 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 sorry, sir. I say how I know it ain't your underwear. Sir, I don't. I didn't work here. The young, the lady is saying that it's actually your underwear that's been in her room here at the retirement home. Well, man, you got the wrong one. You know, this is a bad time to be messing with me. And where is you at anyway? Sir, I'm down here at my office right now. And where your office at? Do you need to come and see me? Yeah, I need to come see you. Where your office at? What seems to be the situation? Because I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting a hostile. Uh, you're sounding very hostile right now, sir. Yeah, 
Uh, well, I'm a hostile individual. Okay. You well, call me something about some old, old lady. You go call me about somebody. Call me something about one of you. Say, yo, you know? Sir, you're going to watch your tone, and you're going to talk to me like you got some sense. Man, I ain't got to watch nothing. I'm an old man. I ain't got to do but die. I don't even pay taxes. What you want? Uh, you want to do something, you go ahead and only do it. But don't be calling my number no more. Okay. Well, I want to tell you this, sir. Yes? This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You have been prank phone called by your girl that's standing right there with you, Doris. You know what? I would have kicked both of y'all. <laughs> Why you do that, Tommy? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> huh? Man. Man, you know, this ain't no good time for me, man. My, I don't have time, man. You messing with me. Where you at, man? Man, I'm, 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 I'm in the studio. I'm in New York City, man. Oh, New York. Well, you get a chance when you're going back to Philly. You stop through Trenton. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me holler at you for real. <laughs> hey, put your picture on TV so I see what, know what you look like next time I see you. <laughs> Oh, oh man, right, you got you got it, but you must don't know this woman. You got the wrong one. You, you should have had somebody else. In this ain't gonna work. This is a woman, man. And I know she couldn't get that off of nobody because she's crazy as hell. <laughs> All right, but I got something for Miss Doris. <laughs> hey, I got to ask you one more thing, Mr. Anthony. What is the baddest radio show in the land, man? Man, you know what it is. Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> <laughs> you <know>? All right. <laughs> 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 huh? Here huh? we go. Huh? What? There it is. You play too much. You Are know you what I'm saying? Let me give an irrelevant statement. Uh, sometimes you got to have draw down your time at home. Yeah, there you go. You know, that's what it is. Irrelevant. Yeah, it don't make no sense. Irrelevant <laughs> statement. <laughs> After every prank, you got to have one. Huh? There it is. You got to have draw down your time at home. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. That's how I'm pranking like that. That was a crazy yeah. prank, though. <laughs> that's crazy, though. You know how the nephew Foolishness. get. Foolishness. So where uh -huh. you performing at, Tommy? Uh, I'm down at the uh, Wachovia Comic Co Center. Uh, yeah. That's this how weekend, happened. that was last weekend. <laughs> oh. mm. Boy, oh. when he found out you did that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, he what are you giving out back? bad dates? Got people coming down there to see me again, and I'm already gone. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, hey, ain't, nobody ain't nobody coming, coming to see you when you already gone. <laughs> they know you left. Yeah. yeah, you ain't that famous, homie. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was down here two weekends in a row. Nope. Uh, uh, why don't you, you, you really won't go on tour with him. You won't come down there. Dog. I just want to see it for me, though. No, see, Junior, you, listen, listen, let me just say this why he ain't here. Because his boy Paul going to tell him I said it anyway, so <laughs> whatever. Uh, here's the deal. Y'all know I can't go down there and walk out there in front of Tommy. Y'all know that. What do you and mean? And why y'all keep letting him think that it'll be nice if I show up? Why would y'all do that? Because it will Uncle be. Neff, be I nice. think it would be nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you see right Unc there? Unc and Neff on a show together, that's priceless. Just if I go it. out there and perform in front uh -huh. of Tommy, yeah. Y'all y'all don't know how showbiz work, do you? What do you mean? See, this is the part <laughs> y'all don't get. I just you got to it. follow the act mm. in front of you. Yeah. Well, I mean okay. And he's pretty good. Tommy I, is pretty good. Yeah. Tommy can't yes, follow Steve Harvey. Okay. That's where <laughs> See, you I do it. I don't give a do damn it. how long I've been out. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, let me tell you something. <laughs> All right. All right, Steve. Coming up at the top of the hour, we have some entertainment and national news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so in today's entertainment news, listen to this story. The University of Kansas has issued an apology after Snoop Dogg performed at a preseason college basketball celebration that featured pole dancers and a money gun. Uh, what were they upset about, the pole dancers or the money gun? I don't know. While the audience, yeah, while the audience enjoyed Snoop, university officials were less than impressed. Uh, they said, we made it clear to the entertainers, managers, that we expect 
expected a clean version of the show. This is according to Kansas. <laughs> oh, it was. Uh, athletic director Jeff Long, he says, I take full responsibility for not thoroughly vetting all the details of the performance and offer my personal apology to those who were offended. Uh, he added in a statement, we strive to create a family atmosphere at Kansas <laughs> and fell short of that this evening. I'll say. Uh, um, <laughs> but the pole dancers were f- fully clothed. Yeah. They weren't like. But, um, pole what? dancers do bring families together. I mean, if I'm out there with my brother. If you see- at, if you at, when, when they was doing the rehearsal. Uh-huh. <laughs> And the they saw check. the poles and where they was going to put the poles in the spotlights. Because I saw it. The poles was spot, was spot lit. Uh-huh. When them poles mm-hmm. was out there doing rehearsal for the spot lit part, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who, what mm-hmm. did they think was going to happen? <laughs> I don't know. What, what did he think? Did, did, did they think them was fireman poles? <laughs> did they think them was telephone poles? Mm-mm. No. I don't know. <laughs> But, and, I mean, but come on, know, it's Snoop. I mean, exactly, it's Snoop. Sir. It's, it's Snoop. Snoop. You know who you You're get. You're taking a yes. risk. Yes. Why yes. is so Snoop you... at family night? Yeah. <laughs> I know. Come on. <laughs> who was the genius in the meeting that offered that up? Well, I'm just trying, you know, it, it's it's a lot of reasons why you know. y'all don't need to be talking to Snoop. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But you know what? And Snoop is also one of those entertainers, don't you think, Steve, that whatever he does, it's it's Snoop. We love Snoop so much. Okay, so he did yeah. that. Okay, get over it. It's Snoop I'm telling you right it's now. what he does. Pray if you and it would appreciate it. <laughs> and we done had some concerts, baby. We done had Maze, Patty LaBelle. We yeah. done had them all. Snoop come through. <laughs> you yeah. been there. Come on through, Snoop. Uh-huh. But Homecoming. They, yeah. They seem like they were equally as upset, though, about the money gun. I didn't get that part. He Pole dancers, out free money. I get. But yeah, he's shooting it out of, yeah, the money gun. So it seems like that would have been College fun. College students need money. Yeah, What's it seems like that would have been fun. I don't get it. No, the other part about and it then he was saying the curse what, what, words. Huh? <laughs> he was saying the curse words from his songs. He wasn't censoring himself, you know. No. Yeah. That's how he wrote it. <laughs> this is Snoop. Deal double G. Right, how he wrote it. Snoop uh. is performing at family night. <laughs> <laughs> right there. The when they okayed the that, skip mm. monitoring it. When you okayed it. Yeah. Yeah, man. Maybe Has they Snoop think issued well. a comment? <laughs> he thought it was uh, a great performance. Say, he, he hasn't said anything <laughs> yet. But Dude. maybe they thought since he put the put the gospel album out last year and, you know, he's on TV with Martha Stewart, maybe they thought, maybe you know, his see, live shows. that's what shows, they get for thinking. Yeah, his live shows <laughs> calm down a little bit. But this is Snoop the dog father. Come on. <laughs> oh, it was fake money, too. Yeah. Fake $100 bills. Yeah. Well, so what was the... Hey, great job, Steve. Great job, man. <laughs> For family night, Steve. <laughs> All right, they come on. They Snoop it's... for family night, and now they tripping. <laughs> yes. All right, it's time for our headlines. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Ann Tripp, please. Watch, everybody. This is Ann Tripp for the news. Donald Trump says he's pulling U.S. forces out of the multinational coalition that's fighting terrorism in Syria. But the planned move is raising concerns that the president is abandoning Syrian Kurds who have been fighting ISIS with the United States, leaving them open for, to attack from Turkey. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham uh, went on Fox and Friends and called the idea short-sighted and irresponsible. This impulsive decision by the president has undone all the gains we've made thrown the region into further chaos. Iran is lifting their chops. And if I'm an ISIS fighter, I've got a second lease on life. The Senate leader, Mitch McConnell, is now the highest ranking Republican to also criticize Trump's decision. Trump says that Turkey and the rest of Europe should be responsible for watching over captured ISIS fighters. And Trump's tweeting that he will, quote, obliterate Turkey's economy if that country does anything he deems, quote, off limits. U.S. Energy Secretary Rich Perry, meanwhile, uh, he says he absolutely did ask President uh, Trump a number of times to call Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, but he says he wanted Trump to talk about energy, not about the Bidens. Perry held a news conference yesterday to defend himself from what some critics say appeared to be the president throwing him under the bus. 
by telling lawmakers that Perry urged him to make that controversial call on July 25th, uh, the now key focus of the House Democrats' impeachment inquiry. Perry says he did tell the president that it was in the best interest of the two nations to have discussions, but regarding energy issues. His spokeswoman tells CNN Perry wasn't part of that phone call between Trump and Zelensky and that Joe and Hunter Biden never came up in his conversations about Ukraine. Three House committees leading the impeachment inquiry of President Trump now issuing a new wave of subpoenas. And reports are that legislators are now asking for documents from both the Pentagon and the White House Budget Office, all part of the probe into Trump's alleged decision to withhold military aid to Ukraine. Get this, Minnesota Congresswoman Ilhan Omar is calling out officials in West Palm Beach, Florida, for putting a 21-year-old black man in jail for 10 days because he overslept and missed the first day of jury duty. Ten days in jail for that. DeAndre Somerville, who has no prior criminal record, cares for his elderly grandfather and who works for afternoon programs for West Palm Beach Parks and Recreation. Somerville was sentenced to jail, 150 hours of community service, and he was fined over $200. Representative Omar says that the treatment given to young Mr. Somerville is indicative of a U.S. criminal justice system devised to criminalize people of color. The grocery uh, store chain Kroger says it's no longer selling e-cigarettes. And today is National No Bra Wearing Day. Yes. (laughs) Now back to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Kim Kardashian, weren't we just talking about this yesterday? Kim Kardashian has secured yet another early release of an inmate. Uh, Momalu Stewart was convicted of murder at the age of 16. Prosecutors tried him as an adult, and Stewart was sentenced to spend the rest of his life in prison without the chance for parole. Following 22 years behind bars, Stewart may walk away a free man this week. The judge could stick him with five years probation. Kim Kardashian filmed her prison visit in July with Momalu. Uh, she has an upcoming reality series on the Ox- Oxygen Network called The Justice Project. He thanked Kim on social media, saying thanks to the homie Kim for her support in my case. Freedom is imminent and success is assured. Wow, Steve. Oh, man. She is really doing some really good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, she won't be until like 2024, but she's studying diligently. And wow, she's making a difference. 2024 for what? Uh, She's graduating, I think, for law school. She'll have from law school. She'll have her law degree. Oh, that's wow. Yeah, she's st- yeah. Yeah, so she's doing all of this and still studying and preparing to be a lawyer. Mm-hmm. She man, she's on the right track for yeah. that for sure. Wow. That's pretty uh, Yeah. That's but pretty of course, impressive. Yeah, pretty impressive. Would you say social Steve? media yeah, would have right. something to say about that? Cuz she oh, helped yeah. somebody get out yeah. of jail. Yeah, they're going to have something to say. And then, you know, her husband, we talked about her husband yesterday and, yeah, you know, his Which, issues because, in Salt Lake City and talking yeah, about, and the, you know. Well, that wasn't a great thing Donald to Trump. say. Yeah. No. You know, you can't make a sweeping statement about slavery. The Republicans freed the The Republican Party was totally different back then. Totally different. It's not the same party. It's just not. And you can't give Republicans credit for freeing slaves when you look at what this Republican president is doing to bring it back. (laughs) Hell, what do people think he means when he says, make America great again? I'm not saying he's bringing back slavery, but at what part in American history do black people want to go back to where it was great again? Just help me with that. Yeah, I I can't. I cannot help you with that because I don't recall... I don't, yeah. I don't know if we, any we, time we I want to go back to uh-uh. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I judge it from right. my grandmother no. said, no, it wasn't good back then either. Mm. Uh-uh. No. no. And then you think about Jim Crow and all of that stuff back in the day. Come on, man. The water fountains for coloreds only. All of that. Yeah. Listen, if you want to comment on this story, go to Steve Harvey FM on Instagram or Facebook. Coming up at 34 after trending news, some members of the Youth Black Leadership Summit said, quote, President Trump has done so much for the black community. We're going to talk about that right after this. (laughs) You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Well, Steve Harvey, here is a story that's trending on social media. President Trump spoke at the uh, Young Black Leadership Summit at the White House. Uh, it was in the East Room. It was on this past Friday. In attendance were some of the hundreds of young black conservatives who came to Washington last week to show liberal America that African Americans can be conservatives and support Trump and that the conservative movement is not just for old white men. Also, one of the youth black leaders said that Mr. Trump has done so much for the black community. Please take a listen. First of all, I just want to say I love President Donald J. Trump. The media is attacking him, but when they attack him, they are attacking us. Because he is out here fighting for us. And her, they are harassing you, Mr. President, so they are harassing me. And I want to say one more thing here. A while back, President Trump said when he was talking to the black community, if you vote for me, what do you have to lose? Because the do-nothing Democrats have done nothing for the black community. 2020 is around the corner, and we have a lot to lose now because President Donald J. Trump has done so much for the black community. Thank you, President Trump. But what, though? Okay. Hold on. <laughs> Young man, I'm I'm really uh, I just would I would love to talk to you because you, you have no problem saying these words, but your words that you have nothing to back them up, young man. I he has done so much for the black community. I love President Donald J. Trump. Why? Why? I I was waiting to hear why. Mm-hmm. Why you love him so much? And then you said he has done because he's done. He has been fighting for us. How? Name one fight Donald Trump has made for black people. And then he said, and then let me say one more thing. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on, bro. You haven't said anything yet. <laughs> you haven't said anything yet. He has done so much. And when they are attacking the president, and they are harassing you, they are harassing me, sir. Policemen, politicians, slave owners have never had a problem harassing black people. So young man, when you make these sweeping statements about how good he is for black people, old black people wanna know what the hell you talking about. I got Democrats ain't done much for blacks. You might can you might can pass that statement, but I sure want you to show me what President Trump has done for black people. You cannot be pointing at that African American that he pointed to in the crowd one time, talking about there goes my African American. You can't tell me. We have nothing to lose because he knows that there's nothing ever going to happen on our behalf. I was reading the article where the young man was talking about how African-American unemployment is at a a low. Young man, is that really because of something President Trump has done? Or is that something that has been brewing over time that was things implemented and now he's getting credit for it? Because I haven't seen him or heard of him doing anything to employ black people. Next part, the crime bill, I mean the prison bill. That was a great move. That Van Jones, uh, that Cahoe committee, uh, Kim Kardashian, she played a huge role in that. Okay, that's cool. That does not mean he should be president because those two things right there that you're pointing to, man, if you look at all the rest of the stuff, you gotta be kidding me. And Steve, only like 4% of African Americans think that Mr. Trump's actions have been good for African Americans. Only 8% of African Americans. And they was all at the voters, White House the other day. Yeah. Yeah, identify with the Republican <laughs> Party. And this Dang. is according to an AP poll. So, And uh, I'd like yeah. for you to check and see if that percent sign is real or if it's just faux black people. <laughs> okay. Coming up next. <laughs> Nephew Tommy is out. Junior is here with today's prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. Subject, I'm raising my children the old school way. All right, that Girl, is the you're going subject. To jail. <laughs> right now, <laughs> nephew's out. Junior is in for the nephew with today's prank phone call. What do you have for us today, Junior? Uh, you know, in my brilliance. Uh, what? You know, my brilliance. <laughs> you know, got to compliment which, yourself which first. You, you just can't get a prank. Got to compliment yourself first. Okay, you know, my gotcha. brilliance when I'm uh-huh. pranking, you know, sometimes you uh-huh. have to do these things. So that's why mm-hmm. I came up with sleeping security guard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sleeping <laughs> security guard. Run it, cat. Security booth, may I help you? Hey, uh. Uh, this, Sir, can this, you speak up? I can barely hear you. Is this a, is this a security booth down by the uh by the gate? Yes, sir. This security booth. Yeah, listen, man. It's some people uh next door to me. They they keep. I'm hearing a bunch of scuffling and stuff going on, but I ain't. I, you know, I ain't really sure what's happening. I know, I know. I'm, oh, I heard okay. this lady scream or something, man. But I, I just. <sighs> Okay, sir, if you could give us the unit number that uh, you're in, we could have somebody come right over there and check that out. Hello? Sir? Sir? Um, hello? <coughs> yep. Sir, are you hello? okay? Yeah, I, 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 uh, I, got a, I got a sleeping disorder, man. So I, I been, oh, okay. I'm going to sleep uh, without... I, I, I understand. The people ne- next door to me, man, they was, I mean, they was sitting there, I, I heard this lady scream, and I just didn't, I didn't want nobody to, you know, start shooting or nothing, because I know they was arguing pretty pretty heavily, and then I heard it, I know they must have been fighting, because I heard I, some I, 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 I understand, scuffle. sir. Sir, what, what unit are you in? <sighs> Hello? Sir, are you there? Hello? Hello? Uh, hello? Yes, I'm here. Are you okay? Is this you the you the security guy, right? Yes, sir. You called us about ten minutes ago and we've been trying to find out what unit you're in. Well, yeah, man, these people up here, man, they, they arguing and I I be I'm hearing more people over there now and they they fighting, man. I know I hear two two it's gotta be two men in there fighting this lady over there. Sir, sir, I, I hate I to interrupt I, you, but I hear some if you could just tell me the unit, the unit, sir. The I unit. hear some kids over there, too. Sir, we need to know the unit so that we can come out and investigate. Hello? Hello? Sir, Hello? 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 <coughs> Sir? Uh, 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 hey, uh, hey, look. Uh, I cannot do this all day. I am trying to work. I cannot uh, be uh, around with you on the phone. Could you please give me your unit number? Sir, the, the, the people over there, they arguing, man. I know you... Yes, you, you have said that they are arguing. I heard you, you when you said that they were arguing... Sir, if you just give me that unit number that either you're in or the unit number you hear the uh, noise coming from, we could have somebody come over there and check that out immediately. So, what unit number are you in again, sir? Do you do you do you do you hear him arguing? See, uh, let me put. No, I to... only hear your snoring. I need the unit number. Let me see, listen. I'm gonna put the phone up. You, do you hear? Him? You hear him? Yes, sir. But I don't hear the unit number. I need the unit number. Without the unit number, we're just having a conversation. Hello? 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 Sir, are you there? Yo, yo. Oh, hey, man, you checked on them people? No, sir, we have not checked on the people because... We have not been able to get the unit number from you. Sir? Dude, this is falling asleep. Every time he gets ready to tell me something, he falls asleep. Come here, come here, come here. You got to get it. He's falling asleep. Hey, man, come here. Dude, this guy is falling asleep on the phone. I can't get the unit.
unit out of because she's falling asleep. Hello, sir? Hello, sir? Sir? Hey, man, I don't know what unit he's in. The <laughs> keeps falling asleep. Every time I ask him something, he falls asleep. He keeps telling me they're over there fighting, but I don't hear him. I, he won't tell me the f***ing you. I don't talk. I don't know the you. What the f***? Would you wake your f*** up, please? Hey, I got a guy on the phone that he says that they keep hearing some screaming over his by his unit, but he's falling asleep. I don't can't get him on. Get him to tell me what the unit number is. Hey, dude, come here. Listen to this. Listen. Hello. I'm gonna need you to wake up, sir. Okay. Sir, could you please give me the unit? Well, I, yeah, I gotta ask you something. How come y'all, uh, all y'all do is just sit on y'all and watch cars come in and out that door instead of helping people that need help? Because and need it's nothing like you won't give us a unit number. You shut your up hollering at me. You need to do your damn job, you rent a cop. I'm a rent a cop. I'm a rent a cop. But your is a falling asleep. Would you just give me the unit number, please? I'll give you the number, the unit number. You ready for the unit number? Are you, li are you listening to me? Yes. I this am is to you, sir. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just uh -oh. got pranked by your co-worker. Uh oh, <laughs> y'all crazy, y'all crazy. Uh, this is not funny, man. This is not funny no, at no. all. Y'all got me out here walking around this <laughs> complex looking for people hollering and screaming and, <laughs> and I and your sleepy. Every 35 seconds, man. Y'all funny at all. Okay. Uh, let me let me ask you something, man. What is what is the baddest radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> huh, that is, huh? Here come a relevant statement. You know, sometimes you have to have oh. sleeping security guards. Come on, you. Ain't nobody finna be on their no, job watching don't. everything. Why would I do that? Why would I do that? Wow. Why would I do that? Why would I do that? Sleeping security guard. There it is, Shirley. There it is. That's how I became the King Frank. Because I think like that. I had to child. <laughs> but you can catch the nephew this Saturday on this new hit TV show on OWN, Ready to Love, 10 Eastern, yeah. 9 Central. You can catch the nephew on TV. This boy moving up. I'm proud of him. Can I just ask something while I'm... Go ahead, huh? What? Anybody want to tell me why he ain't here today? Anybody? I, you know. On the air? Oh. I don't know. <laughs> my, we thought you knew. I'm know just curious. I don't know. I, I know yeah, my I know rating. he big time now, TV shows and everything. I just want to know why. Is he just. I didn't get my. I yeah, maybe Hollywood is, is calling. Resting? Hollywood I, is calling. Well, him, let me ask you a question because he reports to you, so he didn't call his boss to tell him he wasn't coming in today. Boss didn't you hear me what? just ask you why is he not here? Okay, <laughs> then. I do not know. Him. Then that makes me ask you it's your nephew. Why did you hire him? Because you know how he is. He might be at home listening to the show right yeah. now, just yeah. kicking it, just chilling, for all we know. Yeah. When are we going to interview my daughter, Brandy? No. Tomorrow. I think Brandy may say something enlightening that would open up this a little bit. When we interview Brandy, y'all ask her a few, a few questions. Her cousin. <laughs> all right, listen. All right, Junior, thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> We're going to move on. Up next, it's the Strawberry Letter subject. I'm raising my children the old school way. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And listen, if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to Steve Harvey FM and click Submit Strawberry Letter. Uh, come, uh, you know, we could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. Let's go. All right, here it is. It's time for the Strawberry Letter with my good friend, Shirley Strawberry. Thank you, my good friend, Junior. Subject, I'm raising my children the old school way. Dear Stephen Shirley, I am a married father of two girls, and I have a problem at home. Last week, I popped my 16-year-old daughter in the mouth after she raised her voice at her little sister and then raised her voice at me when I told her to stop. When I hit her, she lunged at me and punched me in the face. 
I tried to hold her. Oh, I tried to. I'm starting to breathe heavy right now. I, I I tried to hold her to keep her from hitting me again, and we ended up scuffling in the floor like two dudes in a street fight. The whole time she was still yelling, and I was oh I was trying to control my anger so I wouldn't hurt this child. Her bad behavior has been building up for a while, and there were several incidences incidents where um I had to punish her for her bad attitude or for making smart remarks when we ask her to do things. I have warned her in the past that no child of mine will ever talk to me crazy or disrespect me, and I threatened to pop her in the mouth before. She kept on trying me. I I grew up under strict rules, and I was taught to respect my elders, but my wife grew up differently, so she doesn't understand my form of discipline. I am not an abusive father, and I do not hit my child hard. I did not hit her hard. It was just enough to get her attention. I agree with my wife that I could have handled it differently, but I lost it when my daughter yelled at me. Now, whenever I try to talk to my daughter, my wife jumps in and escalates the situation and sides with my daughter. I'm praying for patience and guidance to move past this, but I cannot promise that I won't react the same way if my child ever puts her hands on me again. I understand why my wife is upset, but am I wrong? I would never intentionally hurt my own child. Please advise. All right, listen, Dad. Uh, as a parent myself, uh, I, I understand. I deeply understand where you're coming from. I was raised this way as well. You know, the old school way, spare the rod, spoil the child, all of that. And no, I won't necessarily say you're wrong for wanting to discipline your child and teach her some manners and and, and all of that. Uh, but your, your heart is in the right place. But I, I just think, you know, as her dad, popping her in the mouth is a bit extreme, okay? And uh, her her behavior, her behavior is inexcusable. I will say that. Uh, there's no way. I, I could not have survived in my house had I done this. Uh, yelled at my mom or, or you, you know, or my parent. And then on the floor tussling with my parent? No, 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 no. Uh, th- you know, I, I will say this. This is a problem, I think, between you and your wife and your parenting styles, okay? This has been building up, like you say, and going on for too long. You and your wife are on two different pages and you don't present a a united front your daughter sees that she knows it she plays you guys against each other and then your wife steps in and sides with your daughter and escalates the situation your family dynamic is way off you and your wife need to need to get to some sort of agreement on how you are going to discipline these children you cannot have your daughter in your face and tussling on the floor with she's got to understand that she can't do that you it's a respect situation going on here. And your wife can't allow this to happen either. She's got to step in and tell your daughter she's wrong. And until that happens between the two of you, uh, your daughter is just going to keep doing it. But please, don't don't hit your daughter. Okay, sometimes, you know, you said you, you kind of just snapped. You lost it. You know, you don't know sometimes your own strength. And you could really hurt your daughter. So back away from that. You and your daughter, you and your wife talk about this situation about next time how you handle your daughter steve and discipline her steve all right first of all just let me say this bro before we even get too far in this letter you wrong bro i just gotta tell you you wrong i got four daughters i'm just telling you man you handling this wrong bro you just wrong you said i'm raising my child the old school way okay well let me help you to a couple things I'm a married father, two girls. I have a problem at home. I popped my 16-year-old daughter in the mouth after she raised her voice at her little sister and then raised her voice at me when I told her to stop. You hit your daughter in the mouth? Dog, how does that sound? I raised my kids the old school way. You hit your daughter in the mouth? She's 16? What message are you sending to her from a man? That if you run your mouth to a man, it's all right for him to pop you in your mouth. I don't care if you are her father. You can't hit your daughter in the mouth, man. Now, I raised my kids old school for real. But I just got to tell you, man, I've never hit one of my daughters. I've never spanked Brandy, Carly, Morgan, Lori, none of them. Wanted to. Wanted to knock them out. But I didn't. Because I can't. Because I can't send that message to them 
that a man who loves you should fit, should be able to hit you. I love them. I can't hit them. Bruh, that's the basic rule you broke now. When I hit her, she lunged at me and punched me in my face. I tried to hold it, keep her from hitting me again. We ended up scuffling in the flow like two dudes in a street fight. What? <laughs> Yo, bruh, what? Dog, you scuffling in the flow with your daughter like two dudes in a street fight? You raise your daughter's, your daughter's the old school way. What? Bro, I'm sorry, man. I'll be back. But you, you, hey, man, you wrong, dog. Yeah. Man, hang, you wrong. Hang on, Steve. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to have part two of your response coming up at 23 after the hour. Uh, the subject of today's strawberry letter, I'm raising my children the old school way. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter subject. I'm raising my children the old school way. Yeah, we back. So listen to me. I'm raising my children the old school way. This man got two two girls, got into an altercation last week, and popped his 16-year-old daughter in the mouth after she raised her voice to her little sister and then raised her voice at me. I told her to stop. Then I hit her. She lunged at me and punched me in the face. I tried to hold her to keep her from hitting me again. And we ended up scuffing in the flow like two dudes in a street fight. Bruh, I told you before, you're wrong for this on so many levels. First of all, you should not be hitting your daughter in the mouth. Period. Like Shirley said, I was raised old school way. I raised my kids. Spare the rod, spoil, spoil the child. Cool. But I've never hit my daughters. Because I never wanted my daughters to equate a man's love with physical abuse. You and your daughters in the man, you're supposed to love her. So now she thinks when a man get mad at her, it's okay for him. You know how many times a woman has hit me and I've done nothing? So can't no woman hit you and you do nothing? Come on, bro. I mean, since we talking old school, if you really want to go old school, no man should ever hit a woman or a girl. That's old school. You should never fight in front of your kids with your wife. I I can't let my sons abusing their mother. There's a lot of old school stuff. You're breaking everything, dog, with this hitting this little girl right here. The whole time she was still yelling, I was trying to control my anger so I wouldn't hurt this child. What? What you finna do to her now, dog? You done punched her and popped her in the mouth, and you in the flow wrestling like, like two dudes. What's next? Damn, bruh, bruh, when you typed the letter, did you read it? Her bad behavior has been building up for a while, and there were several incidents where I had to punish her for her bad attitude or for making smart remarks when we asked her to do things. She got a bad attitude. She punched you. Where'd she get the punching from? Oh. Uh, oh. I don't, I you, don't I got any, any idea where she might have got the punching from? Because her daddy hit her in the mouth. I have warned her in the past that no child of mine will ever talk to me crazy or disrespect me. It's a way to get to a better result than the way you did. And I, so I popped in the mouth. I threatened to pop her in the mouth before, but this time you did it. She kept on trying me. I grew up under strict rules, and I was taught to respect my elders. Well, you got to teach your daughter to do that, to respect they, her elders. But popping her in the mouth, now if, if your wife pop in the mouth, that's a whole nother thing. But you as a man popping your girl in the mouth? Oh, bro, come on, man. I'm not an abusive father, and I did not hit my child hard. You a man, dog. How, how hard do you have to hit the girl for it to have an effect? Come on, man, you in a different weight class. You and your daughter don't even weigh the same. Fighters are in different weight classes. I didn't hit her hard. It was just enough to get her attention. Oh, you got her attention, all right, she came for you. I agree with my wife that I could have handled it differently. So why are we writing the letter, dog? If you agree with your wife that you could have handled it differently, why are you writing the letter? So, 
Uh, but I lost it when my daughter yelled at me. Now, whenever I try to talk to my daughter, hey, man, let me tell you something about your daughter. A lot of men didn't yell at you. You ain't hit them in their mouth. Uh-oh. God, dog, did I slip up? Yeah, you said that. See, yelling at you, getting hit in the mouth, is not the measuring stick. You know how many dudes didn't yell at me, and I'm glad that's all they did was yell at me? Bro, I'm just telling you, I'm sorry, man. Try to talk to my daughter. My wife jumps in and escalates. She sighed with my daughter. I'm praying for patience and guidance to move past this. What? After all this, you're going to drag the Lord in it? <laughs> but I cannot promise that I won't react the same way if my child ever puts her hands on me again. Did you not put your hands on her first? See, bro, I, I, I'm, I'm just sorry, man. I, I can't let you. Now, now, all this praying for patience and guidance from God, then you say, I tell you what, I can't promise you that I ain't going to do this again. What? <laughs> I understand why my wife is upset, but am I wrong? Dead wrong. I would never intentionally hurt my own child, but you can. People have killed their kids before. I remember uh, a few years ago, this little boy was getting on his daddy's nerve. He sucker punched him in the chest. The boy died. I don't hit that hard. You in a different weight class, homie. Yeah, you wrong. And to every man out there that's beating their daughters, you wrong. You wrong. You got to find another way to talk to your daughter, man, because you cannot be the person that they say loves them as a male figure and teach them that a man that loves you should have also the right to hit you. You, you, you we, we, we backwards here. I'm sorry. You wrong, partner. I ain't siding with you no way, shape, form, or fashion. Your wife is right. Should have handled it a different way. I'm in the flow with my daughter wrestling like two dudes in the street. Man, please. <laughs> All right, you can post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM. That's on Instagram and Facebook. And please don't forget to check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Now, coming up, coming up at 46 after the hour, the New Orleans Saints linebacker uh, has been fined for wearing a headband that said, Man of God. What? We'll talk about that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, faith and his belief in God are at the forefront of Demario Davis's life. Uh, the NFL, get this, guys, has fined him for putting it on his forehead, too. During a September 22nd game against the Seattle Seahawks, uh, the New Orleans Saints linebacker, again, his name is Demario Davis, wore a headband matching the team's colors, bearing the words, Man of God. He said he was fined $7,017 for a first of fence uniform violation, even though the headband was invisible beneath his helmet. NFL rules are strict when it comes to game day apparel and personal messages are prohibited. Um, He says, my faith is always going to be the most important aspect of my leadership. Uh, When he was with the uh, New York Jets, he says, I was a leader off the field on this team before I was a leader on the field. I wanted my character to speak for me before I even stepped in the stepped a foot on the field. I wanted guys to know that I put God first. I put my family second and I put football third. So there you go. This was all in an uh, Associated Press interview back in 2014. So that just lets you know where his heart and his head is. Okay? I ain't mad at him. I don't know yeah. why you're finding a man for that, though. Wow. Yeah. So much other stuff we could be finding for. I mean, seriously, man. There's yeah. a lot of stuff dudes do. You could find them for. Yeah, Not so, that. Yeah. The man. NFL rules yeah. are strict, though, and I guess if they let him go, I don't, I don't know. Don't even. Well, I guess if your headband got Nike on it, then yes, cool. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, because Nike yeah. paying. God forbid you yeah. have man of God on there. Yeah, yeah. Wow. They who, who the... wants to promote that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, on we already got a image. The your league already the... look crazy. And, and good point, Carla. <laughs> on a team called the Saints. <laughs> called the Saints. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> 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 you can't talk about God. <laughs> yeah, you mad about that? What is this world yeah. coming to? Mm, mm, mm. Oh, wow. yeah. Unbelievable. I mean, it's crazy, man. But September, your president September. can say he can grab women by the pee and he can still be the president. Yeah, uh-huh. not get fined, not yeah. anything. The president ain't got fined for nothing. He done said that. No, he lied. Every- I mean, man, he's just making stuff up, man. 
Yeah, and he doubles but down he on everything. But he is a little nervous about this impeachment inquiry. He, need, he needs yeah, to be on that phone call. He's a little nervous now. Yeah, yeah so we'll see. They want to talk yeah. to Giuliani. Mm. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> coming up at the top of the hour, you can sue the person that your ex-husband or your ex-wife left you for? What? We're going to talk about that right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. So you can sue the person that your ex-husband or ex-wife left you for? What? What? I'm confused. Wait a minute. What happened? <laughs> All right. This is Relationship Tuesday. Uh, this is our topic, okay? A jilted North Carolina husband reportedly has won a $750,000, that's three quarters of a million dollars, uh, lawsuit that he filed against a former friend for stealing his wife. His name is Kevin Howard. He won the judgment under an unusual North Carolina law that lets people file a suit for alienation of affection against the person who seduced their spouse. What? I guess she's going back. <laughs> for that money, right? <laughs> Mr. Howard said it was painful betrayal. He came to my house and ate dinner with us. Uh, this is what he told a local TV station. We shared stories. We talked about our personal lives. Mr. Howard went on to say that he believes in the sanctity of marriage and his divorce was almost unbearable, like someone calling you and telling you that a family member had tragically died. So, hmm, wow. Steve, should all mistresses and gigolos or whatever they're calling themselves be liable for ruining a marriage? What do you think about this? Well, I don't know if ruin if like if I had a, a ex that I didn't like or something and she left me, I mm-hmm. you know but see, I that's send the, the dude some flowers or something. <laughs> that's the thing, yeah. he loved her. He, he loved, loved well, his wife. You know, I mean friends. I can understand that, but yeah. I don't you know, I mean, yeah, they suing for everything else. They sue for a lot less. Yeah. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. But he So won. why not? Yeah. Seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Is it worth that, man? What was she doing? Yeah, Wiley. that's crazy that you can do that though. That you can sue, you know, someone who broke up your marriage. <laughs> this, but someone he's saying someone who, it. yeah, someone who came into his home, ate dinner, shared stories. He was probably telling him too much. Uh huh. <laughs> he shouldn't have told him all the stuff he told him. And Maybe then, yeah. that had something to and do with it. He just do the opposite. That's what yeah. he did. Mhm. Mhm. Wow. Yeah. Betrayal right there. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't, I'm not. I'm. I'm okay with them suing for that, you know. But hell, they suing for everything else. Let's go. Well, what they all suing you for? Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you bring uh, that up, Junior? Oh. Uh, <laughs> I'm just sorry if it's anything for less. But you know what, man? The majority of lawsuits that I'm involved in is some person who is trying to extort money or get money by making a false claim and thinking I'm going to settle just because I don't want to go through the case. I never do. I never settle. I do not do that. Wow. Oh, okay. No. So you go okay. through the process. Yeah. So, Carla, no, man, did you know? If, if you're wrongly accusing me, I'm sorry, partner. I'm sorry, partner. Get your money out, too. <laughs> Wow. Did you know this, that among all the other things R. Kelly is facing, he's also facing a, a, a charge similar to the man we're talking about in this story. He's facing serious criminal charges. Um, wow. But one Mississippi sheriff is demanding his case against the singer move forward. Uh, according to court documents obtained by by the blast, the sheriff, Kenny Bryant, is asking a judge to grant him a default judgment against R. Kelly. He's suing R. Kelly, accusing him of breaking up his marriage by carrying out an affair wow. with his wife. He filed his Whoa. lawsuit in Mississippi, which allows partners to file cases over cheating. Just like this case we're talking yeah. about. We might want to be in North in Carolina. North Carolina. Yeah. yeah. The, okay. This case has been at sheriff, a standstill uh, for months. He don't have no money. Get a suit for some song rights. <laughs> some royalties. Yeah. We'll take that check. <laughs> yeah. Wow. He says he's wow. tired of waiting around for R. Kelly or his companies to respond. He believes the judge should award him damages and close this case. 
Wow. He got way wow. bigger problems than you right there, Papa. <laughs> That's why yes, you ain't getting did. a call from his lawyers or his company. <laughs> right, the hell out of here. We got to fight with these kids. Coming up next. You in here oh talking about God. your wife. More music, more fun, more <laughs> ignorance on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. We'll be back in 20 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, today is Taco Tuesday, and according to a poll from Taco Del Mar, soft-shell taco lovers and hard-shell taco lovers are quite different people. When it comes to personality traits, (laughs) hard-shellers describe themselves as adventurous, curious, happy, hardworking, high-maintenance, and organized. On the other hand, soft-shell eaters say they were calm, clean, creative, friendly, and loyal. I'm How definitely do you like soft your touch? shell. I, me too. Yeah. Soft shell. I do not all like crunch. I don't like that stuff cutting top of your mouth. Man, no. Yeah, top I'm of soft your shell all day. Yeah, soft so that shell. means that I don't means, like crunch with my meat. <laughs> that means you don't. Uh, I love. So you don't like chips with your sandwich? Chips with your and sandwiches or anything? And what about nachos? Like? I've never <laughs> been a fan of nachos with, the, with all the stuff in a pile. Mm-hmm. No, because after two, if three people is over there, start looking like trash real quick. I can't stand that, man. <laughs> it start looking like what up? It, look, it just start looking like trash. <laughs> well, you just get your own plate. You you don't share, Steve. No, I do not do that. No. <laughs> if, if another like dude nachos. hand touched the bowl, we need two uh, bowls. Yeah, that's like that's like double dipping or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I love cons- t- hard shell tacos and nachos. I like crunch. I like See, I like, I like the soft tacos. I like soft shell. I really, really do. Yeah. But I love oh, chips I mean, I and like all that. I like soft shell, too, but I like mm-hmm. hard shell. Yeah. All right. Coming up, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show and some trending news at 33 after the hour right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. So in today's entertainment news, <laughs> listen to this story. The University of Kansas has issued an apology after Snoop Dogg performed at a preseason college basketball celebration that featured pole dancers and a money gun. Uh, what were they upset about? The pole dancers or the money gun? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. While the, the audience, yeah, while the audience enjoyed Snoop, university officials were less than impressed. Uh, they said we made it clear to the entertainers' managers that we expected a clean version of the show. This is according to Kansas. <laughs> oh, it was. Uh, athletic director Jeff Long, he says, I take full responsibility for not thoroughly vetting all the details of the performance and offer my personal apology to those who were offended. Uh, he added in a statement, we strive to create a family atmosphere at Kansas <laughs> and fell short of that this evening. I'll say. Uh, oh. <laughs> but the pole dancers were f- fully clothed. Yeah. They weren't like... Pole what? dancers do bring families together. I mean, if I'm out there with my brother, if you see. at if you at when, when they was doing the rehearsal, uh huh, and <laughs> the they saw check. the poles and where they was gonna put the poles <laughs> in the spotlights, cause I saw it, the poles was spot was spot lit. Uh-huh. When them poles mm-hmm. was out there doing rehearsal for the spot lit part, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who, what did they think was gonna happen? <laughs> What, what did he think? Did, he, did, did they think them was fireman poles? <laughs> did they think them was telephone poles? Mm-mm. But, but, I mean, but come on, know, it's Snoop. I mean, exactly, it's Snoop. Sir. It's, it's Snoop. Snoop. You know who you You're get. You're taking a yes. risk. Yes. Why yes. is so Snoop you... at family night? Yeah, <laughs> I know. Come on. <laughs> Who was the genius in the meeting that offered that up? But I'm just trying. You know, it, it's it's a lot of reasons why you know. y'all don't need to be talking to Snoop. Yeah, <laughs> you know. But you know what? And Snoop is also one of those entertainers, don't you think, Steve? That whatever he does, it's it's Snoop. We love Snoop so much. Okay, so he did yeah. that. Okay, get over it. It's Snoop Dogg. Right it's now. what he does. Pray if you and it would appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> and we done had some concerts, baby. We done had Maze, Patty LaBelle. We yeah. done had them all. Snoop come through. <laughs> you yeah. done been there. Come on through, Snoop. Uh-huh. But Homecoming. Th- yeah. They seem like they were equally as upset, though, about the money gun. <laughs> I didn't get that part. He Pole dancers, out free I money. get. But yeah, he's shooting it out of, yeah, the money gun. So it seems like that would have been College fun. College students need money. Yeah, it seems like that would have been fun. I don't get it. No, the other part about and it then is. he was saying the curse what, what, words. Huh? <laughs> he was saying the curse words from his songs. He wasn't censoring himself, you know. No. Yeah. That's how he this wrote is, it. This is Snoop. 
<laughs> oh, it was fake money, too. Yeah. Fake $100 bills. Yeah. All right, there you have it. Uh, coming up, our last break of the day and some inspirational closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey at 49 after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we are, last break of the day. It's been a good day, as usual. Yeah, it's been fun. Yeah. That's yeah. been great. You all right, Steve? <laughs> Did you yeah, drift you know, away? Because we started the show off talking about attention span. Attention deficit. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's, it's, it's been one of those days for me. I will admit that so uh-huh. far, but it's going to get better. I always keep my head up. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. which could lead into these closing remarks because I might as well talk about something okay. that I was dealing with. Right. You know, I was in uh, Jamaica over the weekend, and um, every morning I have a little meditation that I do with uh daily inspiration that I read, uh, my Bible and a journal that I take notes in. And I started it uh, doing this, taking these notes the first, uh, July 7th was my first day doing it. And I have notes for practically every single day. I've only missed like three days from taking notes, just three. And so it's something that I've learned to do and it starts my day off uh, really, really well because it gives me a, a weaponry to guard against the evil principalities of the world. You know, with with so much stimulation out here with social media and technology and cyberspace and phone calls and messages and texts that, you know, even if you're having a great day, there's so much stuff out there that can throw you off if if you're not, if you haven't stabilized yourself spiritually. And uh, Sunday, when I woke up, uh, I was in Jamaica. I was just about to open up my uh, journal and my daily inspiration. But I had left the TV on the night four in the living room. And so I went into the living room and I was about to uh, sit down with my books. And I said, man, let me let me cut this TV off. And I went over there and I hit it and it didn't go off for some reason. And I said, man, what's the deal? And I tried to hit it and it didn't go off. And I just hit the channel, and I hit the channel one time. Now, I'm in Jamaica now. I hit the channel one time, and up pops Joel Osteen. And so, I was, instead of me opening up my journal and my daily inspiration, I sat down and cut the, vi- by, uh, cut, cut the volume up. I went, okay, this must be for me. <laughs> Maybe he wants me to get this. And oh my God, oh my goodness, was he correct. Now, I can't tell you exactly what he said, so I'm going to paraphrase it a bit. He was talking about people who were have given up on their dreams. Now, that didn't apply to me. But he said, this is for people who've given up on your dreams. This is for people who've been waiting on something for God for a while and it hasn't gotten there yet. And you're starting to feel like maybe it ain't for you. Or are you thinking about giving up on it? I wasn't quite in that part of it, but I w- I've been a little discouraged uh, about the fact that something I had been wanting for a while hadn't happened. A lot of people fall into that bracket, but a lot of people have fallen into the, they waited so long they just decided it wasn't for them and they stopped. Or they gave up on their dreams and their visions. And he was talking about, he said, What you don't realize is that when you ask God for something, that God is working on it behind the scenes. He's doing some stuff and orchestrating some stuff and putting some stuff into play for you that you may very well not even be aware of. But if you give up hope, if you stop looking for it, if you lose the faith, you then stop the process. Because God don't give you what you want all the time. He gives you what you believe all the time. See, you don't always get what you want because what you want may not be best for you or something like that. But if you believe God to give you something and he has it for you, he's going to give it to you. But some people just give up hoping for it, looking for it. He said, if you've gotten at the point in your life where you've given up on your dreams, 
or you think it ain't coming and you're starting to fade, he said, I want you to do something. He said, I want you to look again. And that caught my attention. He said, I want you to look again. He said, if you look again and you don't see the blessing coming or you don't see the blessing right there, he said, I want you to look again. He said, and then if you still don't see it, he said, listen to me real close. I want you to look again. And that was the thing that I needed to hear yesterday. Because sometimes, y'all, when you ask God for something and it don't come in the time frame that you want it to come in, you got to stay patient. You got to stay watchful. And you got to do like Joel Osteen said, you got to look again. And if you look over there and you still don't see it, stay patient, but look again. And man, oh man, oh man, I can't tell you how I needed that yesterday. I can't tell you how I need it today. I can't tell you how often I need that because so many times, man, so many things go counter to the way you want it to go or what you thought it was going to be that you end up and you start feeling just a little bit discouraged. Sometimes you just flat out, I can't take it no more and I quit. But I, I, I very rarely get that way. But I do get, I'm human, you know, so I get moments where I'm, man, this is exhausting. Because what I'm attempting to do is exhausting. What you're attempting to do or become or the point you're trying to get to, it's exhausting. But if you're exhausted and you don't feel like it's happening fast enough, do like Joel Osteen said, y'all, look again. Just look again. He's probably doing something on your behalf that you're not aware of. Those are my closing remarks. That really helped me. So you know what I'm doing right now? I'm looking What's again. That? I'm looking again. Y'all have a great weekend. <laughs> what? I know. It's Taco I know. Tuesday. Taco I don't care Tuesday. what it is. Y'all have a great weekend. <laughs> For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 